Hi everyone, it's me Cheryl. I hope you're all alright. It's been quite a few weeks since I've done a video, hasn't it? Um, gosh, what's been happening since then? I know in between I last spoke with you guys, we've had some plumbers in and they're up and down those stairs creating a lot of dust and a lot of noise and I just couldn't film, I couldn't film up there because I couldn't get to the room up there while they were here. And in here or e even in there, they were up and down so it was too much noise and sometimes I would have to go through there to get to the garage to access water pipes and stuff. So it was just impossible. I thought, well, a video can happen later. So I've got I was going to say a couple of finished projects, but I'm not really sure whether one of them is finished. I can't think whether to class that as finished or not. And I've just remembered something else that's in there, and I'll get it in a moment. Right, so the finished project is a hat. Have I showed you this? Or was I in the process of finishing it? So it worked, working on it. So that's, that's the hat I finished. Universal ripped hat. So this band here, it's just folded up and you could wear it both ways as a slouchy or as a folded up hat. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So I haven't sent that to the recipient yet because I'm working on the scarf. Did I show you that last time? I can't remember what I showed anybody. But the scarf is at the position now where I really need to roll it up because it's annoying me. This scarf is, I think it's called the prismatic scarf. One moment, I will check. I've got it on my drop box so I can access it there. Yes, the prismatic scarf by Juan Juan Che. Let me have a look at this website. Uh, Featherandfan.wordpress wordpress.com wordpress was i going to say wordpress <laughs> so then Fe yeah feather and fan uh, wordpress wordpress.com i can't even speak now that's terrible feather and fan dot wordpress dot com and i haven't showed you it yet have it's a 12 pattern repeat it involves knits pearls and slip stitches so there's the slip stitches. A lot of it happens in threes, but it shifts across. Isn't that beautiful? So it keeps going. And you've got a, light, a nice, like, selvage edge there. On both sides. And here it is. And here it is. I'm not sure how many inches I've done so far. We'll have to measure that. Okay. So I'm at the stage where I really need to start rolling it up. So that's going to go with that. Even though the pattern doesn't go with it, the colour doesn't. It's still going to be nice. Let me tell you how many repeats I've done because uh, a repeat, a 12 row repeat, is approximately just over an inch. Not much over though. It's got a herringbone scarf. It says prismatic scarf on the Dropbox, but says herringbone on my title of my knit, knit counter. Okay, I've done pattern repeats. I've done 29 pattern repeats. So you know it's slightly more than 29 inches. I'm going to have to check that out. That's a prismatic scarf. Yeah, that's what it says on the... Um, it says that on the PDF, prismatic scarf. But where does it say herringbone? Okay, for some reason I decided to write the word herringbone. There is herringbone, the word herringbone in the document, but I don't think it's to do with that actual scarf. I think she, she or he, got inspiration from various sources to come up with that pattern. And that's probably, I just plucked the word herringbone and put it in my knit counter and that was that. I called it herringbone scarf, but at least I know what I'm talking about. But that's it, that's a prismatic scarf. It's beautiful, isn't it? To go with that hat. 
So obviously uh, the young lady is not going to receive it for, well, we're going into spring, we're in spring now aren't we? So I think by the time she gets it it will be summer. <laughs> but she can have it ready for next winter. But I didn't want to send that hat off by itself and then have a weather hat and wear it out and then have the scarf and it's, it's nice of them to go together isn't it? It's like, what do I show you next? I had this wonderful idea to do like a basic um, triangle shawl and I thought, I know, I'll use this yarn and it's lovely. The thing is I'm going to frog it. It's nothing to do with the yarn. Um, isn't that gorgeous? That's one of the skins that Amy Gibson got me for Christmas. But when I tried it, which is why I haven't snipped it, when I tried it, it's like a bit short, so I thought, I'm going to knit this up as something else, maybe something straighter. But those cords are absolutely gorgeous, and it does deserve to be a very nice item, so... Yeah. I know, I've like practically finished it, but it's... Mm, there's no more yarn left, that's it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it into something else instead. Um, but also, I've realised for that, that pattern, that was a DK weight yarn. I would have been better off with a, a four ply, AKA fingering. Is it fingering weight? That's what I mean, the thinner yarn. Sock weight yarn, yeah. It, the lighter might have been better. But other than that, oh, just the opportunity to see all them lovely colors together is gorgeous. So I think I will do it straight. I'll do something with it straight anyway. I am going to, oh. My husband's socks are upstairs. I did actually finish them. Did I tell you that last time? Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert a picture of my husband's socks, if you haven't seen them already. I decided to. I wasn't going to. But I finally decided I will knit CJ a pair of socks. Um, but they will have to be knee highs because he wears some um, ankle calf splints and they go up to his knee. Now, the socks he currently wears um, are the calf length, so they don't cover the full splint. And you know, his socks don't have to get horrible and sweaty and just regular store bought ones. Um, and I have heard from people that knitted socks the wool um, people's feet tend not to sweat I nearly said swell then um, so maybe this will help him and I thought okay this is going to be a challenge because his feet are so well he's got 24 centimeter foot length um, but because he doesn't walk um, he doesn't weight bear and there's no spread in his feet or anything and also no muscle tone in his calves really So his feet and his legs are very narrow So these luckily I've done three pair of socks Which have not followed any particular pattern other than a heel. You know what I mean? Or like a toe type um, The rest of it has just been just a vanilla sock I haven't followed anybody's pattern because I've been confused by it um, sizing and whether it fit, that kind of thing. Um, I've just gone by measurement and my own gauge. So, well, that was a thought. If that wasn't training enough three pairs of socks already, I know what to do, don't I? So, I measured several points uh, for Christopher. I measured here, the ball of his foot, of course, and like the gusset inset area and the ankle. I measured mid-calf and I measured under the knee as well. Um, so you do see him actually, well his instep is obviously bigger than his, the ball of his foot and his ankle. The ankle is a little bit wider than the ball of his foot and then of course mid-calf and then his, under his knee is bigger. So I've done all the measurements. Also, his left leg is slightly narrower than his right leg. There's a bit more muscle tone in his left, uh, sorry, his right leg. So what I've done, this is where uh, negative ears really helps. Basically, I just, for both left and right, I 
I added them both together divided by two because there wasn't much in them, such a tiny amount. And then with negative V's as well, I'm basically knitting the same size socks because I thought I'd have to knit totally different size socks. So that's what I'm going to do. And I found the yarn, it's going to be this. It's Kinko Zigzag Chestnut. And the reason why they're like that, I'm trying to find the pattern repeat and I'm not having any luck. Um, and I did find a picture of a pair of socks on the internet knit up in King Cole Chestnut. And what I saw was they, they managed to line up the blocks of the pattern. So the, uh, they're like the burgundy, the brown, the orange. So they managed to line up the blocks of pattern all right. But when they come to the white bit with the blue like speckles and flecks in it, those, those, although they were lined up, the white bits, the, sometimes it came out as flecks, sometimes it was speckles, sometimes it was dots. They, they were the only bits that were different, but other than that, the actual block of well, more solid colours, they were level. You know what I mean? Am I making any sense? I hope so anyway. But if you were to Google King Cole Zigzag Chestnut and to find the socks, you'll see what I mean. So I'm thinking, okay, let's not be too specific about this. As long as I find the two blocks of colour that run on, yeah, I should be fine. It's just me being funny. I've got, I think that that's the only delay with me at the moment, I think. I practice doing it all. <laughs> oh yeah, because I found a lovely pattern for an atomic, an atomically, no, not atomically, an anatomy. An hmm. <laughs> Anatomy. It. Oh. It basically follows that shape rather than. Yes, rather than. I'm gonna drop that pen. It follows the top shape rather than the bottom shape. Yeah. It goes in like. It embraces the fact that you've got a big toe and your little toes slope further down, yeah? I found a pattern on, I found a pattern on Ravelry that uh, shows how to do that, except when I followed the pattern the first time, I really um, messed up big style. But luckily she said what pattern it was based on for uh, a top-down version. And I thought that'd be interesting. So I did the top-down version just as a practice. Work fine. And then I thought, right, okay, I'm going to deconstruct that top down ver version and make it a bottom up version and just see what happens. And then when I compared the original pattern, what I've got totally wrong with what I've just worked out in reverse, it was exactly the same. It was me. It was me all along. I got it totally wrong. It looked like it could have been in the shape of an owl. <laughs> Never mind. But yeah, I'm going to do top. So I'm tore up for CG, I've decided. Now, why am I going to do that? Because I feel like it. Um, I'm sure there was another reason. Now, I cover my bases getting both of these with the knee highs. Because, okay, one of these would make a nice calf length pair of socks for someone, definitely, right? Now, I know he has narrower feet and stuff. Um, but I don't know how much difference that would make, whether it would be like a small woman's foot, do you know what I mean, Equ equated to that. Um, but because I'm going knee high, I'm not sure whether I make it with them, with two, two socks, so I thought, better be safe than sorry, I'll get two of them. Where was I going with that? I don't know. But anyway, I've been practising a heel, and I have I put it down and I haven't picked it up again for a while. That's the problem. When I get interrupted, it, I find it very hard to return to the task that I've been doing. I have to do something else and then I forgot to pick this one back up. So I was at the stage where I did a couple of rounds. This is me practicing a heel. Look at this. So I did a few rib stitches. This would be like the in step gusset, the start of the gusset. Then there's like a gusset there. And then I did the heel turn. And then I'm picking up here the side of the gusset and I'm going to about to knit along the front of the foot and then pick up these stitches. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it looks 
confusing and if, it's, if you've never done sock knitting before you're probably going to go but I just need to finish that I only wanted to do it just to get it in my mind that I, I know what I'm doing and that was from that heel gusset thing for toe up and she does a toe down version as well no not toe down a uh, cuff down Blooming Knitter she does them as well that's where I'm getting that from and I'm just playing with it um, and then I tried, this is just totally random, I don't even like it anyway, but it's, look at this, a little waistcoat, now how did I do that? I don't even know if I can begin to explain what I did, and I haven't finished it off. I was worried about running out of yarn. So I didn't make the front as wide as I should on both bits, both panels, because you can see that shoulder, that's going down the front here. I could have done it two stitches either side, and then it would have been exactly the same as the back, but I didn't, I don't know why. Oh. Um, I was frightened I was going to run out of yarn, but actually what I'm going to do with this yarn is crochet around the whole of the outside. Now, now to describe how I did this. Basically, the back panel is just a square, and I use this. This is zippy. Um, it's one, two, three, four of these. That's. Uh, was that in? Did I drop that straight away? Did you ever see any of that at all? Okay. So basically, four of these is one loom. Yeah, and then there's four corners, so I've got four of these and four corners, and it makes 20, there's 20 pegs there, um, and I wanted to do a flat panel, because I saw a pattern on the knitting board website and it said it was 20 pegs across, I was just looking at something, I don't know what it was, um, and so they said five looms and I thought, why did they say that when you could just do like this and just don't join it? You'd still get 20 pegs. Never mind. I suppose that's just in case you didn't have the corners, but then again, you'd have to buy a fifth. Oh, never mind. Anyway, I did the, the back I did as a rectangle, and I did so many round rows, and I just measured it on CJ actually. I just laid this thing on his back, it was coming out the bottom here, and I was laying it across the sh his shoulders. The loom was dangling, it was quite heavy. Right, so, drum more shapes here. That's the rectangle for the back. It's not a rectangle, it's a square, never mind. Um, I could really count how many rows I did, because it'll just, it's quite easy to see. Then I, one, two, Five. I thought I did six. Then I cast off. No, I didn't cast off. I, I, basically, I did continue one side and then the other for the front, right? Um, I worked across so many stitches for shoulder, and then I bound off, cast off this the centre bit. And I, did I work those stitches? No, I ignored those for a while. I, I stayed on this side because the yarn was there. No, it wasn't. Oh God, I'm lying. <laughs> I did work across one row. Now, it might have been the other way on, bear in mind. It came off the loom upside down. So it would have been upside down like that. Uh, yeah, so I worked across one shoulder stitches, cast off some in the middle and then worked across these and then I was back and forth for a couple of rows before I started increasing one stitch each row on this side, it was the inside but I needed to know the armhole how far up, hence the stitches here so I counted how many, that was the actual top of the shoulder I counted how many stitches down, there's, that's why there's a stitch marker there I don't know why there's one there um, and I basically kept working, 
down but increasing until I got to that far and I, like I said I could have went two stitches further on and then I joined on this side as I was working down and I don't know how I managed it without getting confused because I'm having difficulty explaining what I did because it was really hard to, uh, while I was doing it, it was hard to maintain the image in my mind and I was thinking, it's going to end up, it's going to end up, one of these is going to be wrong. So I managed to stitch, stitch them. I was working at the same time as looping them on. And then I did the other side so that it was the same challenge but flipped in my mind and it was, I, I managed it, I don't know how I did it. I can't even begin to describe it, I think it's the outside. Yeah, that would have been the inside, I think, because I could tell by the way it's joined. And if I were to put it on, it's, it's quite warm, actually. Now, it wouldn't fit anybody like me because I've got boobs. <laughs> and it's short at the back. But I, that's like I said, I was worried about running out of that yard. And also, like I said, I could have done an extra two, two stitches either side to fill up the full loom because basically it was nine that side and I don't know, it's 20 isn't it? So it would have been eight that side and eight that side. I could have done two stitches more. I thought it would be okay. I didn't even do it for me. I don't even know why I did it. It was just random. But it was interesting that I did it and it made me think, oh, I could make a waistcoat. Yeah, I would like to just finish that off anyway, because it's, it's not bad, and I, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the colour, I don't like the feel of it, but it's, it was an interesting experiment. I like experimenting. Right, so I did that, and I will at some point finish that off with a... I'll just do a crochet edge, even though ordinarily I probably wouldn't. But that was an interesting experiment. I said that already, didn't I? I'm boring you now, aren't I? Sorry. Um, it's hot. Um, I think that is everything. No, it isn't. I lied. <laughs> Hang on, I'll go and get it. It's bad enough when headphones get tangled up on themselves, but when they get tangled up on yarn and a circular needle, that is really annoying. Okay, the circuit needle's free. Look at that. How did that happen? Right, anyway, what this is is, this is yarn I had for, I got it for a project, it was gonna be a jacket uh, for me, but I realized the yarn was too thin and because the jacket was cables, this is variegated yarn and it just doesn't suit cables at all. So I restarted it, except I haven't finished it. Uh, but I had this yarn lurking around and I've been thinking, what on earth am I going to do with that? And anyway, for the last few months, I suppose, I've been watching some of the ladies at Knit and Natter just knitting a mitered square blanket by... Oh, who is it? Let me have a look. Sue Ann Kendall. Okay. Now you might recognise that image. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll just plod on with something like that, I want. Just random, I've done three squares so far, and each square I've noticed is like three and a half inches, um, each, each side, so that's two, and that's square three, and I'm onto the fourth. So you work it in strips, and then you work the second strip, you're picking stitches up along here. And then at the very end, you, you knit a couple of rows round. That'll be interesting because I've never done that before. I'm interested in what happens on corners. Uh, and also, I can't wait to do that because I did a long tail cast on for the original cast on. Look at that. And then you pick up stitches along here. And you add stitches here. And of course, it's a knitted cast on then. And see how loopy and horrible that is. It doesn't look nice at all. So the next two, I tightened it up a bit because I, I was knitting them on. And it's much better. 
But anyway, I just thought I'd join in with that. That's something just to pick up and whatever. And one of these ladies at Knit and Natter, she especially knits, well, a couple of them do, for charity. And all these blankets and baby stuff and whatnot. And I'll just give her this blanket when I'm done to pass on to the charity. Right, I think that is absolutely everything. I think, I hope. I can't recall anything else. No, nope, nothing else. Yep, yeah, definitely finished. So, until next time, happy crafting everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.